The lecture is continued with graphing sine and cosine function. Now, do you guys familiar with reference number? Um, say, for example, if I have the arc length, they don't, they don't allow me to say the angle. It is an angle. It is theta. But for now, we're going to call it arc length. OK, it's, it's arc length. If I have t equal pi third, then cosine of pi third, pi third pi will 3 is right here. Right. So cosine of pi third is one half. For me, I never remember. I can't do it like that. So I know right in the middle, that's cosine is corresponding to x axis, right? So cosine of pi third is one half. Cosine of um, psi of pi third is two. Now, if I go once more around, if I go once more around like this, I get back to what? To the original terminal point, right? So my point is, if you do once around, twice around, three times around, n times around, you go back to the same terminal points. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, right? So basically, basically, if I have, uh, don't write this down, size of n times 2 pi, 2 pi is once around, n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no. Time, number of times you go around that circle plus t, it is equal to what? It's equal to side of t. It's the same thing, right? Size of pi over three, it is equal to size of pi over three plus two pi or four pi or six pi, right? Um, and we call that the, uh, and that characteristic, we call that periodic. It's repeated itself every two pi. So periodic function, let me highlight here. It's a function f is periodic if there exists a positive number p such that f of t plus p, in this case p will be two pi, equal to f of t. For psi and cosine function, it has the period of two pi. So let me highlight and we box it. This one. It has the periods of two pi for psi and cosine function. Just like I wrote earlier, size of n times two pi plus t or t plus two n pi, the same thing, equals to psi of t and same thing with cosine. Determine whether the function whose graph is shown is periodic. Um, one more thing. Oh, no, no, not, nothing. I, 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 said, I said that before. 1a, is it periodic? It looks like it, but it's not. Remember, periodic function is what? I say that psi of t plus 2n pi is equal psi of t. So if I choose my period is to be here, start right here, the two peak, this is just make it easy, two peak. Is this height is equal to this height? No, right, and we say we it has to be equal, right? So this function is not periodic because, because the, the first point, it is not equal to the last terminal point. Right? So it's not. Periodic. What about the second one? Yeah, is is equal everywhere, right? So yeah. And maybe I can say it's not periods because it's different height. Each. Period. When I see period, I meant that. Right. The difference. 
<clears throat> All right. Objective 2A, we're going to look at the graph. And I want you to tell me those little black dots right there. Is it x-intercept, maximum, or minimum? So the first one, zero, zero. What do you think? X-intercept. The second one is pi half and one. Mm -hmm. And then we have we have pi comma zero, x in a step again, basically is zero, right? And then d part d will be three pi half, negative one. That's the minimum. And then two pi comma zero, that's the x in a step again. So do you see the pattern? Do you see the pattern? It goes from zero to positive. It goes from zero to positive, and then to zero again, and then to negative, and go back up to zero. But it can help you when you graph the, the sine or cosine function. Zero pi, pi zero. Pi is your x value. Zero is your height. What's this one? Because right under. No, no. Oh, pi is your x oh, values. Yes. Yeah. And your height is, is, is escalating between negative one and one. <clears throat> now, um, that is just one period. So what you look, what you look there is just one period, which is two pi. Remember when we talk about sine, cosine, it's just two pi. What if I extended the graph furthermore? What if I keep keep going? For example, the point F. Can someone tell me the coordinate of F? So you got it, right? And G will be three pi comma zero. That will be your x-intercept, right? Um, and H is seven pi half comma negative one. Four pi comma zero. And J is nine pi half comma one. You can see it's the pattern, right? If it start, if it start positive, it started at the maximum. It go to the zero, and then go to the, the minimum, and then go back up to zero, and then go back to the maximum. Right? There's a pattern. You try, uh, you guys try this one, should be easy. Oh, but the way this is psi, the one I showed you earlier, that's psi graph. Psi graph started, is symmetric about what? The origin, the origin, right? If you, if you graph another, an, if you keep going, to extend it to the left-hand side, I mean left-hand side of the y-axis, then you see symmetric, right? So it's symmetric about the origin. Is the odd function which we're going to talk about later. Where cosine, you see it start where? What does it start? It's not started at zero zero. It start at zero one. At zero one. So it's symmetric about what? The y-axis is an even function. We'll prove that later. But go ahead and fill in those these here for me.
Okay, zero one, that would be the max. Right. Pi over two is gonna be your x-intercept. Pi negative one is min. Three pi over two is zero. Two pi comma one is your max. This one is x in the set. Is that what you got? All right, so you should be able to notice. <coughs> the characteristic of sine and cosine function. Sine and cosine function has a period of two pi. We talk about that. Every two pi is repeated itself. The domain of sine and cosine function are all real numbers. Yeah, it just it just like a, it's, we heard about sine wave, right? Just keep going, going, forever. Um, the range of the basic sine or cosine function is oscillating between negative one and one. I say a basic graph, right? It could change. I can elongate my graph to change my range, but the basic range is negative one to one. The graph of cosine is an even function because it's sym symmetric about the y-axis. Say if you extend this out like that, right? It, it, it's exactly the same curve on the right side. <clears throat> Where psi, psi x is the odd function, it's symmetric about the origin. Here, if I extend it out, I keep doing extend it out. Is the mirror image of the left hand side. Uh, it's not that you need to know, but um, the, the the graph of psi and cosine call sinusoidal function. Uh, you don't have to know that. It's not important. You can skip number five. Now, like I said earlier, the range of sine and cosine function is starting from negative one to one. It's not always true, right? I can change that using the thing called amplitude. Right? Amplitude means the height of the graph. So amplitude of sine and cosine function, y equal a times psi x, or y equal a times cosine x. If I have, don't write this down, if I have y equal psi x, what is the, what's a here, what's a equal? One, right, a equal one. We don't ever say, we don't write the one there, but if you see y equals psi x as a equal one, amplitude is one, therefore the range is from negative one to one. If I change that, if I change that, it's no longer one, I want something else, I want two, I want three, then the graph either get what, taller, right, or shorter, depend what is my a. If a is bigger than one, my graph is what, get taller, uh, if a is between zero and one, say one third, one fifth, one tenth, the graph get what? It's squishing down. Do you remember that compression, vertical stretch, all that? A change in amplitude result in the vertical stretch or compression. The number, absolute value of a. By the way, when I say what is the amplitude, I meant the absolute value of a. Right? It's always a positive number. A could be positive or negative though, right? but absolute value of A always positive, and we call that amplitude. So let me write here, amplitude, amplitude equal absolute value of A. If I ask you what's the amplitude, you write absolute value of A equals something, right? If I ask you what is A, then you tell me whether it's positive or negative. Um, if A is greater than one, I'm sorry, if the amplitude is a greater than one, the graph stretch, and if it if it less than one, absolute value of a is less than one, this imply a between what negative one and one, okay. then the graph is compressed.
this is important. Negative value of A result in the reflection about the x-axis. We'll talk about that later. Student have trouble, student have trouble to distinguish whether do they have a positive A or negative A. Right? They have no trouble defining the amplitude though. That's easy, it's always positive. But but to know A is positive or negative, that could be a challenge. Um, number six, describe the transformation. What do you think? Is a vertical stretch or vertical compressed? What is my amplitude? E, by the way, what is my A? A is one half or one half, right? One half. One half. Look at the look at the look at the um the formula. Y equal a times psi x, right? So whatever you see there, it, it, it is a. It is a, not as value of a. Vertical compress or vertical stretch? Compress. Sorry. Is it flipping? No, that is positive. Vertical compress. What is my range? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't look at that. Don't, don't let it fool you. That's the dash graph. That's y equals psi x. I have y equals one half psi x now. Negative one half to one half, right? So if I would graph this, if I would graph this, this point right here, that maximum instead of one is going to be one half. Right, so you can put a little dot there. So that's my ma maximum now. My in x-intercept does not change. My minimum, minimum instead of negative one is negative one half. X-intercept does not change. Maximum one half. You can connect the dot. Make sure you put a little curve to it. I like curve. So if you look at the green one, the ring edge, go from negative one half to one half. See, where, how do you determine the range even without without graphing? Using what? The amplitude. V is your U try one. Let's do seven. Refer to the graph. So that black graph right there on the right. Can someone tell me what is the amplitude? Remember the amplitude is the height. Um <laughs> or I would say half the height. <laughs> two, right? Two. You could go from two to four, right? Remember, this is this is divide in half like that. Right? Amplitude is this part or this part. Yeah. It's not there. I just make it there so you see it better. Uh, amplitude is two. Two. The height of the whole thing divided by two. The range, what's the range? This will be easy. Yeah, two. To four, right? Two to four. Minimum is two, maximum is four. Five, five the five key points. So put your dot. If you're confused, just put 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 where you see the the x-intercept, the maximum, minimum. 
So I see x intercept there, I see maximum there. X intercept, minimum, x intercept, so five of them. The first one is, what is the coordinate of the first one? Yeah, zero, three. Um, what about the second one? Five or two, right? If it if it help you, let me get, let me tell you a little trick. This is how I now for trigonometry. It's not like like the you know how the take mark one two three four five is radian, right? So here is how I do this. The first one I call zero over pi. What's zero divided by? So zero half. Zero pi half. How's that? What's zero pi half equal? Zero. Zero to ten pi is zero divided by two is zero. And then the next one will be what? Pi half. And the next one is two pi half. Two pi half is the same thing as pi, right? The third one is three pi half. And the, the fourth, the last one will be four pi half. That's how I, if I forget, that's how I do it. You, you can memorize pi half, pi, three pi half. But that's how I, Know that I don't ever forget. Okay. I start with zero pi, one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. That's easy. Okay. So the next one will be pi pi half, comma four. And then what else? Um, pi comma zero, three pi half, comma negative. I'm sorry, two. And then the last one is two pi or four pi half comma zero. Let me ask you, um, is this a side curve or cosine curve? It's a side curve or cosine? Side because if, if you would have if you were to bring the black graph down is have the first point is zero, zero, right? Is, is the odd function, remember the odd function is what? Symmetric about the origin. So the equation I'm looking for is y equal a times psi x. Now, something special about this one. It's not here, it's not on the x-axis. What happened is being what? It being dragged up a few, a few units. How many units have been dragged up? Two, right? So it's gonna be add to something. Plus something, I don't know. Plus something. Right. So let's create out one by one. A was A, two, right? It's two. By the way, it's not all way two. Sometimes it could be negative two. And I'll show you how the negative two look like with the graph. Psi at x plus what? Plus? I would say um I would say plus three, not two. So it's, that's 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 you drag it up three units, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of zero zero, now zero three, so plus three. Is there any question for number seven? Yes. Um, for sine, it's always start at zero, zero. In this case, it does not because it's being dragged up three unit. But if you would imagine that black curve is down here, instead of zero, three, it's gonna be zero, zero. The starting point, the starting point. If, I, if, I, if hypothetically, if this is the cosine, it looks like this. It's not perfect, but do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's not sure at zero, zero, right? Right. So is it because like our degree is on the y-axis, the y-axis is the function? No. Psi function is, is the odd function. Odd function mean what? Oh. It's symmetric about the origin. It always starts origin. If you would imagine if I would have dragged that black graph down, 
So can you explain for B why it's a cos function then? For what? It's B why it's a cos function. Because it says cos function. I don't know. Look at the graph. We look look at the graph. What does it start? It start at zero zero or start at one zero one? It start up here. It start up here. If it cosine, then it will start here. I'm sorry, if it's sine, it will start here. Uh, how about this? If it cosine, it's never go through zero, zero. How's that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it takes practice. If you don't get it right away, it takes practice. No, it is. What does it start? It start at zero three. It start at zero three. And if I would have, if I would have go back to the basic graph, it look like this, right? It look like that, right? So you know that it's a psi function, where if it cosine, it looks like this. Let me do it in red. If it cosine, it looks like this. You see how it start differently? So it's a, for, a yeah, it, for psi is always the x-axis right. at the x-intercept. For cosi, it's always start at the maximum. Yes. Why is it pi zero and not that pi three? Pi zero not be Because like your y would be at three. Uh, Say it again. I don't understand. Like the x and the y. Are you talking about the phi phi key point? Yeah. Like like r zero became three or three. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I Is that wrong? Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. Zero three, you're right. Um zero three. Yes, you're right. Sorry about that. I still remember from the basic graph. You're right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Did I get the three pi half, three pi half, two right. Yes. Thank you. I had to write on my notes <laughs> to roll down roll. Are we okay with the sign cosine? Okay. It takes practice. It takes practice. Um <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm building it up. So I, I introduce you one thing at a time. So I just introduce you the period. Now the amplitude. Next, I'm going to introduce you B. So I'm going to make my function longer and longer, one at a time. OK, so the value B. Where amplitude determine what determine the height of the graph, the value B determine the width of the graph, whether it is being getting fatter and fatter, stretching out like that, or it being compressed, skinnier. Right? So value B determine the length of one period. If you have B is bigger than one, remember B is the number in front of X. If B bigger than one, the graph is compresses horizontally. If B between zero and one, the graph stretches horizontally. Basically, if B bigger than one, the graph what? Getting longer, right? Stretch it out, right? It's gonna be like this, kind of like, kind of, oh, I don't wanna say, uh, or look like a, it, it look more and more like straight line if it, B's get bigger and bigger, right? Where if B between zero and one, is get skinnier, right? The periods is get closer and closer to each other. The period is equal to two pi divided by B. This sentence right here imply, all of that is imply 
period equal 2 pi over b. That's very helpful. You need that later when you try to graph sine and cosine function. So far, so good. That's just theoretical stuff. Um, let's take a look. So on your next exam, you might have some, well, not number eight, but you might have something like number nine. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later, but let's, let's do number eight. What is the amplitude of the function here? If you look at the graph. Amplitude denote you know, absolute value of A. Bless you. What is the amplitude? What is your range? Look at the graph. Don't look at me. Look at the graph. Yeah, the range is negative two, two, right? So my amplitude is gonna be two. To remember the amplitude is half of the half of the height, right? Amplitude. Amplitude is this. Does that make sense? So two. <clears throat> what is A? A is two and negative two. I know it's difficult for you to, to tell since you cannot, you know, experience with a lot of sine graph. A is two. A is two. I tell you why, because it's what not. It's, it's, it's not what. It's not flipping over the what. The x-axis. Okay. If a was negative two, it looked like this. Don't write this down. If a was negative two, it looked like this. You're gonna start. You're gonna start at the minimum point instead of a maximum. Right? Yes. Well, that's not one. The last one is two. Number seven. All right. Well, what is the? Um. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. Four. Sorry. Sorry about that. I was. I was thinking about. Sorry, but my bad. My bad. I was thinking about that. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. It. It is. It is one. It is one. I'm so sorry. It is one. Four, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. Sorry, I, I, I don't mean to confuse you further any further. Yeah, yes, yes. It's, it's positive 1, yes. Deliver a note yet, A is also one. By the way, B twos are different things. Amplitude and A's are different things. So I write twice. Amplitude is absolute value of A, A is just A. Yes, yes, you're right, uh -huh. yes. It's half of the height. Find the period and use this to find the value of B. For the period, for me, it's easier to, to calculate the two peaks. You can start any point you want. You can start any point you want. But for me, it's easiest is to start at the two peak. Like that. So here, what is my period? It's repeated every what is the length here? Two pi over three, right? Because if you doubt, you can take the you can take two pi over three here, subtract zero, right? And then you do the same thing. If you take four pi over three, subtract two pi over three, you have another two pi over three, and on and on. But usually when we look at the first one, we don't have to, to calculate the second one.
P equal two pi by three. Period is two pi by three. You write down. Take a look at the note. Um, period is two pi over three. So far, so good. How do I find B? How do I find B? Remember the formula I gave it to you earlier in yellow right there. The period is equal to 2 pi divided by B. We write down here, period equal 2 pi divided by B. That's imply what? We're gonna replace the word period with two pi third, right? So that's a period. So two pi third divided by two pi over B. Can I cancel the two pi on the top? By the way, that's number three, that's not. Can I cancel the two pi on the top? Is that okay? Is algebra. If you divide both sides or you multiply both sides by one over two pi, let's cancel. Um, so I have one third equal one over b. So b equal three. You can check your math again at home. So b is three. So far, so good. You use that again. Okay. Now, how many periods are there in the interval from zero to two pi? Three, right? You see three arrows on the top there, three periods. Everybody see that? There are three periods. within interval from zero to two pi. How is the value related to B? It is B, right? It is B. It is equal to B. It's nice that they tell you what kind of function they tell you is cosine. Now, if they don't tell you the cosine, would you be able to tell? If hypothetically, if I didn't tell, or if they didn't say is a cosine function, would you be able to tell? Yes, you can, right? Because you start out with what? The maximum instead of the x-intercept. A is two, let me double check. A is two, there's no flipping, so positive two. Cosine B is three, so cosine three x. You can check with decimals, I don't have time, so I'm just gonna not checking it today. Number nine is your you try two. And please do not stretch out about the you try, okay? I'm planning to drop a lot of you. I'm thinking, I'm thinking at least eight now instead of five. Eight or more. But still, I still want you to try your best. <coughs> <clears throat> All right, objective 3C is the hardest one there is. So like I said, math is, is being built up. Um, this is the ultimate problem. So we talk about period, we talk about amplitude, we talk about how to find the value B based on what, what equation? Period equal two pi over B, right? 
Now, then the last one is called phase shift. A phase shift result in a horizontal translation. So here, here is a more complicated sine and cosine function. As you can see, let me talk about just one of them. Y equal A, which is amplitude times size. And then the, 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 the bracket is the input of psi, right? It's gonna be B being factored out times the quantity of X minus C over B. On exam three, if you forget this formula, I can write it on the board for you, but I'm not sure about the final, okay? Because I'm, I can, I can help you a little bit on exam three, but final there's multiple instructors there. As you can see, if you look at the dashed graph, by the way, um, if you look at the dashed graph, it is side function because it's what it started at the x-axis, right? That's the basic graph. It changed because what happened? It's being, it being moved sideways. I mean, move sideways. So if I subtract, if I take x subtract pi third, then it moves to the right or to the left? From what you all already know. If, if it being subtract from x value, if you move right or you move left? Right, right, you move right. I know it's just counterintuitive, but because the formula is move right. Um, so basically everything shifts to the right pi over three units. So if you start at zero, now you start at pi over three and on and on. So you add everything, add up to pi over three. Same thing here, if you x plus pi over three, you move left pi over three units. Here is a good picture. Right there you see amplitude is half of the graph, half of the, 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 the height. The period, there's a period. And then there's a horizontal shift. Um, hmm. All right, let's do number four. We have to, um, yeah, let's do four. I'm sorry, uh, ele number 11. So here is the step. If I give you a side function and ask you to graph, you kind of follow these five steps, just like you did in your last exam, which a lot of you forgot. Yes. So the height is from negative three to three, that's six. The height is the min of the function to the max of the function. Amplitude is easy. Amplitude is A. Period is two pi divided by B. Phase shift is C divided by B. I, I'm gonna go straight to the problem. I don't wanna re re repeat myself with the theoretical stuff. All right, so first define A, B, and C over B. So A is two, do you agree? A is two right there, A is two. Now, before we do anything, we need to do one more step, which is they want you to write it in form, in this form. Oh, being, being factored out. I said earlier, it's being, being factored out. So if I were to factor out five, oh, pi over four, let me ask you something. Don't write this down. If I have two x minus one, and I factor out two, what's left? No, x minus what? One half. Right, so two times one half give you back one. Or two times negative one half, give you back negative one, right? So be careful. You know, be careful with those. So if I factor out pi over four, well, the first 
the first factor is x, which is nothing to worry about. But the second one, I have to do what? I cannot have pi over four for the second term, right? So I have to multiply by the reciprocal. You can check your math by just distribute the pi over four. Pi over four times x is pi over four x. Pi over four times four over pi, that's just one, right? And times negative pi over six, which is give you back negative pi over six. Does that make sense? That's just algebra. <coughs> now you clean it up. You clean it up. Pi over six times four divided by pi. Well, pi and pi cancel. Pi and pi cancel. Four over six is the same thing as two thirds. So that's your first step. You need to write it in this form. And if you forgot on the exam three, I will write it on the board for you. But you gotta factor out the B. You gotta factor out the B. A is easy, A is two. Once you could put in that form, you know what's B, right? The reason we factor out because we know what is, we want to know what is B. So because we factor out in this form, let me box this green in blue. B is pi over four, you agree? Let me highlight in green. Right, and C divided by B is two thirds, not negative two thirds. Why? Because the formula is X minus C over B. Okay. So C over B just a minus belongs to the formula, not to C over B. Well, this one they just kind of ask you, um, they just kind of allow you to fill it in, just to fill in. So amplitude two, A equal two. Period. Remember what I say, period equal what? Yeah, two pi over B. Do you know B? You do, right? All you do is replace B with pi over four, simplify, so your period is eight. It's eight. Phase shift, we know that C will be over two thirds. And what, once you have the period, we're going to take that period divided by four. The reason being because we need those for the five, five point key. So eight divided by four is two. They like to write it in six over three. I'll tell you why. You don't have to, if two is good enough. So here is how you do this. So the first, the first X, Coordinate, the first x coordinate is called x1 is equal to c over b, which is easy. It's two thirds. To find the second one, x2, you take x1, add it to the period divided by four, which is we already took care of here, which is two. Right. So x2 is equal to x1, which is two thirds plus two, or the same thing as six over three. You see why they write it six over three now? It's just easier to add. We have a common denominator. Um, so it'll be a third to five x three is recursive, Me meaning you you need to know the one before in order to know the one right now. Right. So x three is equal x two plus period divided by four again. So x two is a third plus that value which is six over three. Right. And on and on. Does it make sense? It's recursive. Yes. Is it all yeah, yeah, yes. That is the formula, the one you saw. Um, yeah, it's too high. You follow that. Would you be able to tell me is if the inner x intercept maximum or minimum based on based on what value? The y value. Uh, you look at the y value, you'll be able to tell. 
if it acts in a set maximum or minimum. Let's grab this. Um, let's grab this. So two, um, I'm gonna divide. So my x, my x axis, I'm gonna divide in three grid like that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The reason being because I have two third. Right? So two part out of three, where two third? Right here. Make your life easy. It's three parts, so two thirds is right there. And then two thirds, zero, eight thirds. Aether is the same thing as what? Two, two thirds. You agree? You agree? Two two thirds is where? Two two thirds. So two as a whole. Two is whole, and then two thirds is fraction. So right there. Two two thirds right here. Uh, is two. So is it should be here. Let me let me let me. Do so two. Let me tell you the, the height, two, negative two, negative one, one. So up here, x2, that's x2, so far so good. x3, 14 third, 14 third is the same thing as four, two third comma zero. So four two third, where four two third? Four at whole, and then two third at the fraction. Right here, zero. Can you guess what is the next point? It go it go from zero to up, and then go down to zero, and go down to minimum, right? So it's gonna be 20 third is the same thing as six two third, comma negative two. Six two third is here, negative two down there. And then eight two third. And then 26 divided by 3 is the same thing as 8, 2, 3. That's my one period. I can check. Can you check for me that this distance is eight? Is it equal to eight? Is it equal to eight? Yes, right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the little two little bit here. Two third and one third become one, so eight. Right. So it is eight. You know that you gotta write. I'm going to make a video about number 12. Okay. You should be able to do your, your workshop now, all right? Because you have this. But I'll do one more at home, just so you have record.